Welcome to our first episode of Epic Book Battles. What is Epic Book Battles? It's the channel that compares and contrasts books with the emphasis on contrast, pitting one book against the other in ruthless intellectual combat. Think of it as Fight Club for Books. Today's featured combatants are 12 Rules for Life by Canadian psychology professor Jordan B. Peterson, and Rules for Radicals by the late American community organizer Saul Alinsky. Be warned, there will be blood. Both of these works are rule books with 12 Rules for Life aimed at readers who want to change their own crappy lives, while Rules for Radicals is aimed at readers who want to help change the crappy lives of others. These objectives, as we shall see, are pursued by our opposing authors in distinctly different ways. Peterson operates from a foundation of individualism and personal responsibility. Alinsky, in contrast, takes a more collectivistic and subversive approach. Before the combat phase of this engagement begins, let's dig a little deeper into each book. Twelve Rules for Life was released in early 2018 and became an instant bestseller. Its author Jordan Peterson first came to the public eye in 2016 as an outspoken opponent of a Canadian law mandating the use of preferred transgender pronouns. I'm not saying those goddamn pronouns. His book contains timeless wisdom drawing from such sources as the Bible, Jungian psychology, and large marine crustaceans. Peterson starts with the premise that people need ordering principles and that chaos otherwise beckons. These principles come in the form of 12 rules, most of which are common sense like Rule 8, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. But behind these simple rules are deeper implications which Peterson lays out. Rule 1, for example, is stand up straight with your shoulders back. And in the chapter devoted to this rule, the role of hierarchy as an inescapable feature of human life is explored. Posture, Peterson explains, is a physical indicator of rank in the social hierarchy. And here's where the lobsters come into play. Posture and escape behaviors in lobsters are largely governed by the neurotransmitter serotonin. Low-ranking lobsters have low levels of serotonin, and this is also true of low-ranking human beings. So what's the takeaway here? Peterson advises readers to take what might be called a fake-it-till-you-make-it approach to posture to help improve one's social status. Because the better your posture, the better your chances of actually affording to eat lobster. Speaking as an experienced professional book critic, I tell the truth. Being somewhat knowledgeable on the subject, I tell the truth. As just a random guy on the internet, I don't really see this book as especially controversial, but those who are skeptical of evolutionary psychology or of traditional values will probably disagree. Rules for Radicals, as the book's subtitle states, is a pragmatic primer for realistic radicals. Published in 1971, the book is a sort of combat manual for young activists providing them with strategies for mobilizing poor and minority communities for grassroots action. Alinsky gained his expertise on the subject through his long career as a community organizer, where he often used unorthodox tactics to achieve his goals. The Nation magazine called Alinsky the country's leading hellraiser. And like Peterson, Alinsky has become a controversial and polarizing figure. It isn't so much what I say, it's the fact that I say it out loud. These are the things that people know, but uh, they just, it, it isn't considered tactful to talk about it. In Rules for Radicals, Alinsky lays out his rules in two categories, those concerning power tactics and those concerning the ethics of means and ends. An example of a tactical rule is, whenever possible, go outside the expertise of the enemy. While an example of an ethical rule is, in war, the end justifies almost any means. And as with all of his rules, Alinsky shows how they can be put into practice. For instance, Alinsky combined these two rules to devise a suggested tactic where protesters would gorge themselves on baked beans 
then infiltrate a strategic locale, acting as human stink bombs to torment their opponents and publicize their cause. Personally, I'm not a big fan of flatricide as a protest tactic. Nevertheless, Rules for Radicals does seem to have proven itself to be an effective guide to organizing people to fight for social change. Okay, let's move on now to find the major points of conflict between 12 Rules for Life and Rules for Radicals and let them clash. Rules for Radicals launches its offensive with this bold opening shot. What follows is for those who want to change the world from what it is to what they believe it should be. The Prince was written by Machiavelli for the haves on how to hold power. Rules for Radicals is written for the have-nots on how to take it away. Twelve Rules for Life rejects this approach, urging caution, as we can see in this rule. Rule 6. Set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Or as Michael Jackson said, If you want to make a world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. Yeah. Alinsky has no patience for such restraint. To him, a radical approach, stripped of the niceties that hinder action, is fully justified. In the epigraph section of his book, Alinsky makes it very clear how committed he is to the idea of rebellion. Lest we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical. From all our legends, mythology, and history, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom. Lucifer. This reference to Lucifer is clearly tongue-in-cheek. Nevertheless, Peterson isn't one to take such an illusion lightly. <laughs> Lucifer is the spirit of totalitarianism. Such rebellion against the highest and incomprehensible inevitably produces hell. Peterson instead seeks to take the moral high ground, as is evident in his rule number seven. Pursue what is meaningful not what is expedient. But Alinsky takes aim at this approach. Ethical rule number 10, you do what you can with what you have and clothe it with moral garments. Morality, as Alinsky writes, is largely just a rhetorical rationale for expedient action and self-interest. Alinsky sees himself as being on the side of the powerless who are engaged in asymmetrical warfare against a powerful foe. So from his perspective, this fully justifies the use of questionable ethics and extreme tactics. Alinsky's other rules, such as Rule 5, ridicule is man's most potent weapon, follow in this vein, culminating with his notorious Rule number 13, a powerful weapon of personal destruction which has been used with devastating effect against many targets, including Jordan Peterson himself. Rule 13, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. Peterson rejects such tactics, believing they are dangerous and triggered by ignoble motives, and he fires back with his stern admonition. Become aware of your own insufficiency, your cowardice, malevolence, resentment, and hatred. Consider the murderousness of your own spirit before you dare accuse others and before you attempt to repair the fabric of the world. Maybe it's not the world that's at fault. Maybe it's you. So far, 12 Rules for Life and Rules for Radicals are proving themselves to be pretty evenly matched and neither book has yet been able to land a death blow against the other. So it's time now to gratuitously fan the flames of this conflict by bringing our opponent's harshest critics into the fray. Jordan Peterson's religion is to actual religion as masturbation is to actual sex. I think Jordan Peterson ultimately is immensely harmful. I think he's encouraging misogyny, he's encouraging uh, nastiness. They say he might be dangerous. This guy is the crazy Christ. I mean, he has a messiah complex. But you're a mean, mad white man. Saul Alinsky. Machiavellian and nihilistic. It's everything that one would regard as evil. Kind of a gangster and a crook. Lucifer! 
You know, Satan. At this point in the battle, our combatants aren't showing any sign of capitulation. The combat is reaching a fever pitch and... It, it now appears our two main combatants, Jordan Peterson, the fearless proponent of order and pronoun purity, and Saul Alinsky, the man of chaos who put the W in SJW, are about to confront each other mano a mano in close quarters combat. Confront the chaos of being. Your posture now, Peterson. The end justifies almost any means. I oh, the humanity. I'm afraid at this point, for our own safety, we're going to have to conclude our battlefield cover. I'll leave it to you, the viewer, to decide who ultimately is to be declared the victor. You can present your opinions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and remember, Epic Book Battles has its own rules. Number one, click the like button if you want to see more of this in the future. Tell the truth. And rule two, be sure to subscribe so you can join us next time for more literary warfare when we'll proudly be featuring two new combatants. The Art of War by Sun Tzu and The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. See you then.